Good evening, everyone. It's good to have you on board tonight. It's February 20, uh, 2024. I'm Steve Carver, and we are getting ready to start a brand new 12-hour uh, course about how to help get your business started and do it as yourself. I'm not a lawyer or a tax attorney, just a fellow that's been in business a long time and very pleased and, uh, and uh, honored to share information with y'all to, to help make your path a little easier to go on. We are sponsored tonight by the Small Business Center at Nash Community College in Rocky Map. And it is a beautiful campus and a great office, and we certainly have a great director there. And Ruthie Holloman is the director of the Small Business Center, and she is looking forward to hearing from you because she wants to help you help get that business started. If you'll give Ruthie a call and set up an appointment, 252-451-8344 or send her an email, she'll be glad to help you. And let me tell you, if you don't take advantage of the uh, assistance the small business centers can offer you, you're just crazy because it's free and it's confidential and it's professional and first class. So her office is in the William S. Carver building. Uh, they're on campus on the second floor. So if you get a chance to visit uh, by the campus, uh, say hello to, to Ruthie. She's a great lady. <clears throat> this is Do It Yourself, Start My Own Business in 2024. And I've been chatting with a few of you, and that's exactly what you're all trying to do. So for the next uh, five Tuesday nights, tonight plus five, 6.30 to 8.30, I'm going to share with you lots and lots of tips and strategies and information to help give you a good footing to get your business up and running. Plus, we'll do all that we can to encourage you and to show you how to do different things. You'll have the opportunity, if you want to, to complete some homework assignments <laughs> to help really get a grasp of what we're doing. So uh, for the next uh, five Tuesday nights, I hope you can find time to uh, join us and uh, dig into the, uh, into the program. For me, I've been in business since 1959. Started when I was 12 years old when my dad opened up a tractor dealership, a farm tractor place. So uh, that same business I'm running today, through the years it's changed uh, its face and operations a lot, but it's still carver equipment. And uh, now it's a primarily an internet business that we sell uh, arm implements to customers all over the United States, in all the United States. Uh, today I had the privilege of uh, working with some people in Vermont and Maine and Delaware and North Carolina and Kentucky and Missouri. So just an example of the folks I was working with today, uh, sharing quotes, information, and seeing seeing how I could help them and make a little bit of money as well. In the past, I've operated commercial uh, uh, lawn masters company where we cut 3,000 apartments a week. Did that for about 10 years while I had uh, three kids in college. Uh, really good business, so I learned a lot there. Also, I've, I've been involved in uh, government contracting, uh, doing different types of work for the government, including looking after uh, air bases for the F FAA, uh, fertilizing the areas, uh, running uh, motor pool contracts for the military at what used to be Fort Bragg and now Fort Freedom. Uh, so a good good basis of, uh, of understanding of how to do business. I want to send greetings from my family to your family. Uh, Norma and I have uh, uh, collected uh, in our combined marriages, have uh, 12 children and 14 grandchildren and and uh, two great, great grandchildren at this point in time. So uh, we have a, a lot of family, a lot of fun, and a lot of drama. And knowing what drama is all about, of course, is, uh, is all about being in small business and understanding what an important role that can play. But again, here's a Wishing your whole family a great new year, and I uh, hope God blesses you with good health and, and happiness. After our uh, presentation tonight, you will get in through email a survey, and we'd really appreciate it if you would fill that survey out and send it back in. It won't take you but just probably less than two minutes, and it uh, really help the Small Business Center keep up with their work. 
of course, I'm going to work hard to make sure that and you'll give me an excellent rating, and that'll help me uh, in my future uh, tasks trying to get uh, get signed up. So let's go to our, let's get to know each other just a minute or two here. Let's go to your chat button, and just let me ask you over in chat, uh, tell me, what type of weather do you like? Cold, cool, warm, or hot? What's your favorite kind of weather? Let's give you an idea of how you all feel about it. Uh, my favorite is warm to hot. That's my favorite. There we go. Getting a lot of warms, okay? I'm the same way. I don't see any cool or cold on there. My wife, Norma, would have would have uh, jumped on, on uh, cool. It would be her favorite. Crystal's warm to hot. I'm the same way. We got along well together. Look at there. Fall weather. Agreed. No doubt about it. And let me ask you, uh, uh, just generally your age group, are you over or under 40? Just put over or under. Well, we're getting a mix there. Getting a mix. Got some unders. <clears throat> I knew that Crystal was, yes. And the business that you're thinking about starting, do you think uh do you think uh it, it will be a full time business? or a part-time, or maybe just a side hustle? How would you classify the business that you would like to start? Full-time, part-time, or side hustle? Oh, great. we got some full-times coming in. That's good. Currently full-time. Good for you, Joanna. Yep. All right. Thank you all for answering. And now, uh, the, the city or town that you live in, city or town that you live in. And we know that Miata is coming from Colorado, so that's a question mark there, I guess. Denver, all right. Thank you. Great. We'll talk part and okay. Joanna, I didn't know that. I thought you were um, I thought you were in uh, in Durham. All right, so that's good. I may have you mixed up with another Joanna then. Make sure you give me your email address, Joanna, because I had you confused with someone else. Now, do you have a pet? And if so, what's that pet's name? What type of pet is it and what's its name? No pets. Well, we have a five see, pet. No pets, I I'm see. I'm sorry, I can't see the teacher because it freezes Freeze up my up. phone for some reason and then it walks me out and... So that's um, what it just did to me a minute ago. That's yeah. All right. Uh, what? And if you have a pet, what's your pet's name? Okay, there's we got a dog and a rabbit. We have an English bulldog. His name is Otis, and uh, five cats. And I won't bother you with all their names because they're not my favorites. Otis is is uh, my bulldog. Hey, Evelyn, glad to have you on board. All right, let's go steady. Next five weeks, if you can, let's plan this uh, this event for uh, third, uh, Tuesday night, 6.30 to 8.30. Thank you for that feedback with all of you, and we'll move on. Now, if you, uh, if you care to and you attend all the uh, webinars, you can, uh, uh, t uh, well, it's uh, attend five, at least five of the six. You can uh, you'll earn a certificate of completion, and uh, if you... Uh, choose to participate in doing the homework and the assignments and doing some minimal basics and getting your business started. Uh, you can uh, become a graduate of the Academy of Entrepreneurs and Associates and get a graduation certificate for that. Uh, plus, we do a, a, a lot more in trying to help everyone get excited about their business and help them basically any way you can. Basically, I don't serve up the table, and you're all invited to the table. Your name is in the pot. Uh, come whether or not you are intent on working real hard and doing all the homework and getting your achievements or just kind of taking it in and, uh, and, and holding on to what you want to and enjoying the class. I want you to enjoy the class. I'll do my best to motivate you because my job is to try to help you get to the next level. But please notice you're, uh, that you're welcome to come and just attend and enjoy and uh, take in what, uh, what you want to take. Uh, I'm a fellow that likes to send out study guides and information to folks that are attending my, my webinars. 
So uh, those that pre-registered, I see that Ruthie has already sent you a, uh, an email full of study guides with lots and lots of information. There's nothing in here that is uh, worthless. And so uh, please uh, take a look at this email that we're sending to you. I suggest that you establish a file in your computer and save it and call it your, your business journal because at some point, every one of these will become valuable to you and help you have less stress and make more money. There's a lot of good information here and uh, please take time to do that. Always the study guys that start out with a number, that's the number of the presentation and that's basically an outline of the talking points that we'll talk about tonight. And I am recording the session. If, uh, if it goes through the recording information said we may have a uh, have to clear out some space, but uh, if the recording comes through, I'll send you a, uh, a link to that. That'll be a YouTube recording so that you can uh, watch it again uh, later if you want to. Not that I think you want to watch the whole thing, but indeed you may see some slides tonight that you'll want to go back and screenshot those slides uh, to see how they can apply to your business. So make sure I have your email address in chat. Uh, I sure would appreciate it. So we operate kind of as a group called the Academy of Entrepreneurs and Associates. You'll see a lot of information about that uh, as, you, as you stay with the course. Our purpose is to help each other to move forward with their business and create a, a, a good uh, working relationship. Uh, uh, I am devoted to mutual helpfulness and uh, ask that as you uh, participate with the Academy that you kind of take that attitude on because I would like everybody to be willing to, to help each other. Uh, we do have our mission, vision, and promise statements that I'll, I'll be sharing with you by email. And if you would like to, I, uh, I'm going to encourage everyone to have a Facebook page and so that we can jump from that to a Facebook business page. But if you, if you can, go to Facebook and uh, find the Academy of Entrepreneurs and Associates. You'll see lots of pictures and information about what we've been up to during the last year. And I hope that, uh, I hope that you will uh, find that page and like it and uh, send me a note that you've been there. And that way uh, I can stay in touch with you uh, that, uh, through Facebook as well. Uh, your success is our goal. And our director, Ruthie Holloman, and hopefully she may be able to join us tonight, she shares that uh, you are the most important person in the room. So as we can tailor these presentations to answer your questions and suit your needs, we'll certainly be glad to do that. So let's start out with uh, just a couple of uh, tiny tips, just some wisdom to let you know kind of uh, what we're in for uh, when you're starting a, a startup business. And number one is to plan for the unexpected. Uh, there's uh, Murphy's out there and curveballs are coming our way. Uh, we, we can do all the planning we like and all the uh, risk management that you want, but still we'll have some unexpected. And hopefully through this uh, uh, course that you will learn to have a lot of uh, a tool belt full of risk management tools so that when unexpected pitfalls or expenses come your way, you will know how to handle it uh, without having to go out of business because lots of times Folks just getting started in business have to go out sometimes really quick because of surprises that come our way. Number two, start right now thinking about building a team around you that will help you with your business, people that you can trust, that you can get information from, that you can sound your ideas uh, on and off of. I right now volunteer to be one of those people for you. Anything you say or, or, or send to me will be confidential. Uh, the only person I have to share with or need to is with the Small Business Center Director, and she will keep your information confidential as well. So find, find a friend that can talk to you that knows something about business that can help you as we move along. Things will go wrong. Things will go wrong from time to time, and you will have to make adjustments. What we learn here in these classes is we don't quit. We make the adjustments and move on because the, the uh, becoming a winner as an entrepreneur means staying in business long enough to learn how to have sustainability. And uh, I'll focus on that real strong. 
My job is to motivate. I am to be assertive. I put that on myself as a personal responsibility to try to be assertive in a nice way, in a positive way, because we all as entrepreneurs have to do that. No one is motivated till someone else is assertive. So maybe that's not in your nature right now, but in the course of this, I hope I can show you and teach you and train you how to become more assertive and to motivate your customers, your employees, and even yourself to take it to the next level that you want to go to. But all through the series, we'll be reminding ourselves of that. Your job is to find the endurance to stay in the game. Finding the endurance to stay in the game. That's how you win this game, is, is learning how to stay in there and being flexible enough to, to go as you go. Each week, we'll have a new word. So we'll have six words that if we're not using in our vocabulary, I want us to start. Our first word uh, for this uh, course uh, is the word shrewd. Uh, a lot of people think that uh, has a negative connotation to it, but I don't want it to be here. But I want each of us to be shrewd, shrewd entrepreneurs, smooth businessmen and women, because shrewdness as in smart, uh, uh, being clever, uh, having judgment, and being able to focus on, on, on where you need to go. Maybe you hadn't thought of yourself as shrewd before. I want you to put it into your vocabulary and make it a place that you want to go. Shrewdness and smartness, good cleverness and good judgment, because that's going to be really important for us as we get our new businesses started. Brilliant, knowing, clever, and I like the word savvy. I'd like for us to be able to say that we're savvy and astute with these small business skills uh, and, and just intelligent along that way. So write that word down, shrewd. Each week, I'll ask you from memory to type them in chat as we move forward. So uh, at the end of the course, we'll be typing in six different words. Uh, I, I know a shrewd used car dealer who knew how to make the best possible uh, deals and shrewd investments with big payoffs. There's a good, a good way that the word shrewd can be used. I have sent to you and will send to you each week the, the, a handout with 40 drill skills. And these are 40 uh, different uh, strategies that you uh, can learn and begin to use. So I'd, I'd uh, encourage you to open up that email uh, that says 40 drill skills. And there you will see different links. I've done YouTube videos for you so you can go to those and learn them and on them because it would go a long way. In the course of the uh, series here, we will go through and cover most of these drill skills pretty quickly at the beginning of each webinar, and we'll start using them and see how they play into our overall business plan. Number one, number one of, of, of eight, a great business plan, we're talking about business plan here, will help you avoid unexpected pit, pitfalls and expenses and we'll tell you what's left, what's left. Next week in the, our, our presentation is all about doing budgeting and business planning, and we want to know what's left. When we estimate the amount of income we think is going to come in, and we estimate the amount of uh, expenses we're going to have, what we want to know is what's left. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll talk in depth about that next week. In week three, we're going to talk about marketing, and we do want a marketing plan because, because marketing is going to tell you what's next. And I will assure you that a gift worth a million dollars to you if you develop a good, simple, but structured <clears throat> marketing plan, then you will know what's next. You will know that you will be able to stay in business because you've got information coming in all the time to help you uh, uh, make adjustments in what you're selling and doing and who you're calling on so you'll keep business coming on your way. So we do want a marketing plan, and in week three we'll get deep into that. We'll also talk about, even starting tonight, that it's important that you know that there's three types of marketable profit centers. And what is a profit center? The profit centers are the different ways that we make money in our businesses. And profit centers are divided into three types. 
Number one, we want profit centers that bring in new customers and create daily business. And number two, we want profit centers that create continuous business at higher margins. That number one profit center usually are at low margins, not much profit there, because we're really trying to attract folks in, and usually we have to adjust our prices down. But we've got to have some regular business, continuing business, with giving us good margins and encourages people to come back time and time again. Now, what I also need for you to understand is you're going to need to be able to make some big ticket items to be able to make some large deposits from time to time, because that's usually the only way that you can kind of get ahead and establish a, a little bit of savings account or some uh, cushion money uh, by making large deposits. Now, which is, which is more fun, to deposit $5,000 or $5? Well, of course, it's deposit 5000 and we're going to talk about the different ways that you'll be able to put your business together to have more and more big ticket items. Now, there's three different types of profit centers, but we need more than three profit centers in our business. I like to say we need at least five, one, two, three, four, five different things that we're doing for different groups of customers that we're serving to help our business be sustainable. If you're planning on doing just one thing, I can assure you that it will go south one day and it's over. But if you've got five different things coming in, bringing money into your business, if one goes south, you've got four more to keep you going. That's really, really important. We want to be diverse with our customer groups. We want to enjoy the benefits of having up sales. That's, uh, and up sales are gonna be so important. So we need to pick and choose our profit center so that we can do that. So again, that we can grow and stay in business year round. Number four is the RFC. And we're gonna talk about RFCs all through the course. Matter of fact, you won't ever attend one of my webinars that we don't talk about RFCs at least a little bit because they are our raving fan customer. Raving fan customer. Now, I'd like for you to go to your chat board right now and tell me what RFC stands for. Type it right in there for me. What does RFC stand for? That's right. Very good. Thank you for jumping right in there. I appreciate it. You're great students. Raving fan customers are the people that come to your business and do business with you and then go out and tell the rest of the world they need to come and do business with you too. And I don't make you a promise in week four, I'm going to show you how to create raving fan customers. You can have good customers, you can have regular customers, you can have loyal customers, but that doesn't mean that they are raving fan customers. And there's just a few things that if you do, it will make those people become your raving fan customers. I said week four, it's week three when I show you how to, how to create that customer. Number five, Remembering the four letters, N-D-C-P, N-D-C-P, like rock, paper, scissors, N-D-C-P. Uh, no demand, change the plan. No demand, change the plan. is telling us that as we do our planning and do our strategizing, that from time to time, we're going to find out that we guessed wrong and we need to change that plan. I'm telling you right now, we don't need to throw the plan away. We will need to learn how to do it flexible so we can change it easily. And I'm going to start on that next week when we do our budgeting uh, using models. We'll, we'll be able to use our income models so we can change our business plan and our budget very easily in, in order to, to stay afloat, to stay in business. A, B, C, D. If you've ever been in the real estate business, that is, you'll hear it all the time there. A, B, C, D is always be connecting the dots. Always be connecting the dots. And we want our dots. And what are our dots? That's the decisions we're making right now, getting our businesses started. Every time we make a decision, I'm calling that, we're not, it's a dot. And I want us to put those dots in a circle. In other words, I want each dot to be related to the other one so that we form a circle and it's like a wheel and it can roll. 
what we got to be careful of is so, is making decisions where one of the dots is outside of the circle, and then what do you have? A bump in the road, and that's a negative. We want to avoid bumps in the road by making the right kind of decisions by being shrewd. That's right, by being shrewd and making the right kind of decisions as we're moving forward. Three words that will make you more money for the rest of your business life than anything else that I'll be able to say to you during the next six weeks. The three words, by the way, will open up profits for you. <laughs> the three words, by the way, are the passwords to up sales and to cross sales and to being able to stack profits. By the way, if you don't get a tattoo tomorrow, get by the way tattoo to you on you so you'll remember this. As we go along in the course, I'll show you how uh, the by the way works with your selection of uh, a profit centers and merchandising and how to, how to make this work so that people will buy lots and lots more stuff from you without you having to increase your overhead. Now, I don't know if any of y'all have ever been fishing on the ocean. I used that for about 25 years. I did it almost every weekend. The wind wasn't blowing hard. But there's three rules that if you're going to fish on the ocean, if you if you put three rules to work, you'll be able to catch fish every time you go out. Maybe not the exact fish you were hoping for, but you'll be able to catch fish. So remember this. It's going to come up time and time and again. Rule number one. Keep fresh bait in the water. Keep fresh bait in the water. Number two, keep fresh bait in the water. And number three, you know, you guessed it, keep fresh bait in the water. Now, we're not talking in our webinar tonight about catching fish, but we are talking about catching customers. And if you do three rules, you will catch customers, and those rules are keep continuous promotions going out in the marketplace. Keep fresh promotions going out to your customers. Stay on top of your game and always be sending out fresh information to your customers. You have to stay in front of them. And it sounds like a lot of work, and you know what? It is. But, is it, but can you do it? You can. If I can do it, you can do it, and I do it. And I'm going to show you how to do it all through this course. Keep fresh promotions in front of your customers. You will see that I'm going to be sending to you fresh promotions as long as you're attending these classes. So let's get started in the business. And there is a lot to consider. Uh, I've got a mistake there. It says part one of seven. It should say part one of six. Some of my series are six parts. Some are seven parts. But we got what type of business are you going to be doing? How about your logo and what, where, is, where do you stand on taxes, uh, permits? What you know about your website, uh, internet marketing? Do you, you know all about that stuff? Well, hang on because I'm going to give you a lot to stay with, and you will become shrewd through the, as this course uh, moves forward. I'm going to promise you that if you will hang with me and. Learn how to listen, and I'll learn how to communicate with you, and I'll do the best I can. I want you to be so much improved uh, during these next six weeks that you just will be so happy and proud of yourself. Now, the rest of the course tonight is going to be based on a book that I wrote, 24 Things You Must Know About Starting a Business. It's available at Amazon. It's 3 to $5 range, somewhere like that. You don't need to buy it because the handout that I'm sending to you is almost a manuscript of the book. But if you do want to give it to someone as a gift and just say you've got one on your shelf or you want me to sign it for you, I, I want you to be aware of it. So chapter one, we're going to go through basically 24 chapter topics really quick and, uh, and go for it. So if you if you would go in and see Ruthie at the Small Business Center, she'll have a certain about 30 to 50 questions she needs to ask you so that she can learn more about what, where you are in your thinking about starting your business and so that you can learn more about where you are uh, as we do that. So let's ask a few questions of you, and then we'll move. You don't have to answer these in chat, but are you going to be personally active in the business? 
uh, yes or no, or you're going to just own it and hire other people to run it. And is this a full time or part time? And we've already seen it several of you're thinking about full time. That's good. Uh, we need to classify that so that we'll know how to build that business budget and business plan next week. Is your business going to be home based, mobile, internet, bricks or mortar, or maybe some type of comp uh, combination? We need to determine this before next week when we start our budget because each one of these types of businesses will require some different changes in our budget and, and in our business plan. So be thinking about that, uh, uh, which type of business you think is going to best suit you. What date do you want to get started, or maybe you're already started. So if you're thinking about starting a business, let's have a date. Why? Because I can tell you that generally it takes about six months to get uh, a new business, brand new, from scratch, up and running. If it's a side hustle, maybe a lot faster than that. Uh, and some businesses uh, faster, some businesses slower. But when you know the date that you'd like to actually say that you are up and running, then we're going to be able to put together a planner for you, a six-month planner, wherever how many months you're thinking about and list down the things that need to be accomplished during each month to get you where you want to be to start. And that's helpful to have a roadmap with some things that you need to be achieved. What you're doing that way is, you, is you're marking your progress, uh, it gives you an encouragement and lets you know where you are. And if you have to they take a break and come back to it, you know what you need to do when you come back. So that's going to be really important for you. Are you going to be a nonprofit? Are you going to be selling products? Are you going to be selling service? Are you going to be providing information or some of all of the above? The type of business and what you're doing will have everything to do with how we put this plan together for you. And it's important that you do it. Now, I mentioned nonprofit right to begin with, and this is the first time that I've done that after a, a, a class I had last week where I had not been talking about nonprofit. I'm not a nonprofit coach, but I do know that the basically almost everything related to nonprofits also relates to for-profit businesses, except the basic uh, uh, paperwork and legal work that you have to do to get started and the uh, board of the directors that you bring together in a nonprofit. So in budgeting next week, I'm gonna be able to share with you for the first time a really, a really sophisticated budget uh, examples that, uh, that apply to a nonprofit, and those would also apply to a profit business if you had the same criteria. Uh, how about your credit score? <clears throat> Are you going to need some credit to get started? And if so, is your credit score one that would encourage a lender to loan you money, or maybe not so hot? Well, one of the uh, handouts that I will be sending to you is different ways to improve your credit score because the higher the credit score you have, the better chance you'll have to get a loan, of course. But more than that, the higher the credit score you have, the better chance you will have to get insurance at a lower rate, to buy vehicles at a lower rate, maybe even to get a lease on a building. So it's going to be important as an entrepreneur that you know your credit score is going to be more important now than it's ever been before. So start making the moves to help bump it up a little bit along uh, so that by the time you're ready, your credit score will be too. For years and years, for 15, 14 years, uh, I taught these classes and uh, mentioned mission statements and vision statements and promise statements, but really didn't get excited about it. Two years ago, I decided to do my own statements, and those are the organizations that I'm affiliated with or have founded. And I found that it was the most important thing that I have done in so many years. So I'm going to encourage you, each one of you, to, to make a promise to yourself to go ahead and work on a mission statement, a vision statement, a promise statement, maybe even a purpose statement and your core values. 
What this does is, and as you see these statements, and one of the handouts I've sent to you really is a great help. You're saying to yourself what you want your business to be, to yourself and the community and your employees and your customers. And until you know internally where you want your business to go and have it structured in writing, it's going to be real hard to push it forward. But once you put it in writing and you share that with your potential customers, let me tell you what just happened. It became serious. Customers will take you serious because you are making a statement and a commitment, a promise. And it just it just puts you in a whole different light of am I am I here to stay? Am I here to see this through with a purpose? Or am I just kind of going to try this and fly by? You will see it work for you, and it's one of the uh, requirements now uh, that you do these statements uh, to, to earn your graduation certificates and become a member of the academy. These are not long, just one and two sentences. Sometimes the shorter the better, but the commitment you make to yourself, the promise you make to yourself makes a difference. Today, I was quoting a piece of equipment to a gentleman in Ohio. And I got all my numbers written down there and I put my sales statements here and encouragement statements there because that's, as sales people, we have to motivate. And then at the bottom of my quotation, I always put my mission and vision and promise statement. And after I read that and saying that, that I was going to do the very best I could, to be honest and forthright, I went back up and I changed a few things in that quotation that could have been taken either way. I wasn't lying, I was just selling, but I went back and I changed some things so that they were absolutely straight up and down. In the past, that statement wasn't there and I probably would just breezed on through it and moved on to my next piece of business. But when you take your statement serious, you'll be a better business person and a better person in general. So list your core values. Uh, look at your handouts. Uh, get with it. List your core values for your new business as well. What they're going to do is tell uh, yourself and, 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 and the community, what are you going to do for the community, your customers, your employees, and what are your goals and standards as you're getting started? Uh, look at what I've sent to you and get started with it. Uh, I have done uh, statements for the academy, uh, our purpose and what we believe in, our mission, what we're trying to achieve, what our vision is to, to end up to try to achieve that. And I'll send you copies of these so you can read them easily on your own. Promise statements on, on what I promise uh, we're going to try to do, the different types of pledge. And uh, I love this, and I'm borrowed a a lot of this information from the preamble to the Constitution of the American Legion, uh, and I picked up there a few sentences from them, and I love the last one which says, to concentrate and sanctify our, our association by our devotion to mutual helpfulness. And that, that's a good thing. I, I'm proud of uh, working with you with that type of pledge to each other. So I hope you'll read those and uh, want to become a part of the Academy. Mentor, someone you can talk to, counselor, will be very, very important as you move forward. Building a foundation as you're just getting started, Crystal and uh, Lanaya, Evelyn, building a, a foundation of diversified, diversified products and services is going to be really important. We want to have many different targeted groups of customers. We want to always, as a part of our foundation, be positive and determined and, and, and find the energy to make it happen. So sometimes we just have to motivate ourselves to do that. We need to know what our goals are. You, if, you, if, we're, if we're after dreams, that's one thing. If we're after wishes, that's something else. But when we boil those down to actual goals that we can put in writing, then we got a chance to see them come true to achieve them. So what is your personal goal, income goal, personally, for this business you're getting ready to start? What does it need to generate for you? 
because you know what that will be? That will become your what's left. What's left for you? What's left for profit? What's left to reinvest? What's left to pay off the startup money you poured into this? We need to know that goal before we get to next week's budget session so that we can build a budget and a business plan that will help you achieve that goal. Uh, what are the revenue goals that you're going to have? And that's all about budgeting and, 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 and putting things together. And that's why it's important that we have these mileposts to help us get along the way to do this. Now, at the end of next week's session, you will have an easy two or three page business plan that you will actually be able to get started right now. You will actually have a budget that will make sense to you and working together with those things. And as you move forward, you'll be able to build a sophisticated business plan uh, that will stand uh, any test that you're at. I don't want to scare you off as lots of times people do get scared in building a business plan. At this point in time, as you're just getting your business started, your business plan can be quite simple and easy to get started. And we'll share that with you next week and help you through it. Start small. Start small. There's no reason to try to start big. Start small. Start small, put your toes in the water, get used to it, and when it's time, you can go big. But right now, you want to get everything in place on a solid, solid foundation. Need to be legal, uh, no doubt, and maybe you're worried about becoming incorporated right now and doing a bunch of legal stuff. And I want to tell you that if you're just getting started or maybe turning a hobby into a business uh, and you don't have much uh, uh, public liability out here, there's no reason for you to get excited and, and uh, stressed about uh, uh, becoming incorporated. There's a time to do that. But, and, uh, we, you're actually ready to do it, and most of us will become LLCs, which is a, a limited liability companies. <clears throat> but until you're ready to get to LLC, you can operate as a sole proprietor. And it's not going to affect your taxes. You've got a place in your taxes where you can, on your tax forms, that you can uh, uh, list down business income and expenses. What is going to help you is if you'll start right now keeping up with all your expenses that you have invested and are pouring into getting your business started. The good news is as you invest in your business, you're making a loan to your business. And at, when it gets up and running and becomes profitable, your business gets to pay you back that loan. And that business gets to pay you interest on that loan. The better news is, as the business is paying you back that money, it's tax-free, tax-free to you. And it's a write-off for the, for the uh, business. So keep up with all your expenses because that will be helpful with your business plan because it will show a creditor that you've got money invested in the game. A creditor is not going to have much interest in giving you money unless you're willing to put your own in, in the business. It's what they call having skin in the game. Now, becoming the LLC, and one of the handouts that I gave you, if you're at that point in thinking about it, is go to that handout. There's a real good link to a video about how to get started an LLC in North Carolina with just real solid, basic information. Generally, folks like to go to an attorney to get their LLC paperwork done just right. Uh, but you don't have to do that, but I suggest that you watch these videos uh, is uh, will help you a lot. <clears throat> uh, facing risk sometimes scares a lot of people. And I, I'm in that same boat. There's times I get kind of shaken up and scared about doing some business. But I do know that you just have to take risks, take chances uh, as, as you move forward. It's just finding the courage or what might be called intestinal fortitude to uh, go to places you hadn't been before as you start this entrepreneurial journey. So the good news is, no matter what the bad thing is that may happen in a certain type of business, there is a risk management tool that will help keep it from sinking your ship. Risk management tools, much everyone's heard of insurance, and that's all that insurance is, is a risk management tool. 
but that costs you money. And sometimes, and, and you will have to do some insurance payments to uh, avoid risk and to protect yourself. But there's other types of things you can do that don't cost you money. It's just put common sense in play, like housekeeping, safety training, and just common sense. So we'll talk about the different types of risks that you may have and how to apply them. If you're already to the point that maybe you're afraid or, or nervous about some things that uh, may be related to your business, excuse me, then make a list, email it to me of the different risks you think that uh, you're going to encounter in your business, and I'll be able to share with you maybe some risk management information. But the good news also is you can go to any independent insurance agent, tell them what type of business you're getting ready to open up, they can open up their computer in just a few seconds and print you out a long list of the different risks related to your business. That's what they do. And is, oh, that's a good place to go get that information. You're getting ready to enter into a place you hadn't been before, possibly, and doing things that you hadn't done before, and you're already a busy, busy person. So how are you going to find the time to do new things. And that is a big, big deal because setting priorities and dividing our time up and delegating uh, different things to different folks or ways of doing them is a big part of, of an entrepreneur being able to get started. And I'll help you with that, uh, setting, setting priorities and determining what distractions maybe you uh, can deal with and, and how to do that. Uh, I'll send you some uh, Good, good information on that, and we'll talk about it all through the series. But let me tell you, it's around the corner, and someone's got to do this work. And we can do it smartly, we can do it organized, and with a time planner and get it done, or maybe we need to delegate it to some folks, to uh, some, some uh, associates, or, or hire some folks to help us get it done. Sometimes people really want to start a great business, a profitable business that would do real well, but just are unwilling to, to get to the next steps and maybe invest some money and a little bit of time to make it happen. I know people right now that 10 years ago wanted to start a business, an internet business, and they wanted to have their own website and wanted to build that website themselves. Well, 10 years have now passed, and they hadn't learned how to build a website yet, and therefore they haven't got a business started. That's right. I can tell you that possibly they could have talked to a couple of people that's online with us right here tonight, and a lot of our associates that have been with us through the years to, to help them get a website up and running within a week that looked pretty darn good and cost very little amount of money to get it going and be in business making money in three weeks. So don't be so determined that you want to do it all when maybe you don't know how to do it and, 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 and your business will never get started unless you accept that fact and say, I need some help. Let's get started. And that's another reason why the small business centers can be so helpful for you with those things. Your business needs to stay legal. It needs to comply with local laws. And that used to be a big, big question mark. But you know what? With the Internet now, every business, I mean, every town, every county has a website now. And on those local websites, they have all of their ordinances and rules and regulations and people to contact <clears throat> listed right there online. So wherever you are, and we've got uh, folks here tonight scattered uh, all the way from Colorado to who knows where, and, uh, and, and you can get the information in what's happening in uh, uh, Miata in North Carolina. You may be in Colorado, but you can uh, look at a website for a local North Carolina town and see what their uh, ordinances are on, uh, on different rules that are affecting small business. Also, you can find out the person to make a phone call to. Here's the good news, and I want you to take this uh, with, with good heart. Most, as far as I know of all, but I, I, I feel good about saying most, North Carolina towns and counties will welcome a new small business in their community. And the, uh, the clerk or the people, the planning people that are involved in that, 
uh, we're welcome and you want to enjoy a conversation about zoning and different rules or signs. And I suggest that you talk to them first and not go out and start making decisions or making moves that you may have to change or tear down or redo because you just want to go talk to them to begin with. That's the difference in being shrewd and being foolish. Be shrewd enough, be astute enough, be savvy enough to know it's better to, re to read the rule book first and get the information than to guess and ask and, and say, well, I'll just apologize because those apologies can get to be very expensive uh, when you're dealing with tearing down signs or buildings or fences or that kind of stuff. You don't want to have a business uh, account, checking account. You really don't want to, and you really need to keep your personal money separate from your business money. And so when you go to the bank and say, I want to open up a business account, the bankers will say to you, that's great. We need to fill out some paperwork, oh, several pages of paperwork. Take you maybe an hour. But one of the things that you're going to have to answer in that paperwork is what is your EIN number, your employer identification number. And even though maybe you're not going to have any employees, you as a business, you're going to need an EIN number. Mine is 5606-862229, um, they had it now for 60 years. And you'll have an EIE number. You know when a baby's born, they uh, they assign them a social security number, and that number stays with them, uh, stays with all of us all of our lives. It's our ID number to government. Well, when a business is born, you're getting ready to birth a business, and that business is going to have an EIN number, which is to the business, is just like a social security number to you, and it's going to stay with you. So how do you get this? Well, you go to the uh, to the IRS website, and there's a place you can click and go right on there and just basically give them your name and your address and what the name of the business is going to be, and they will assign you a number, no charge. Be careful here, because when you go to that website to get your EIN number, pop-ups will come up and say, click here for assistance getting your EIN number. I mean, it looks like this is part of the game. And most of us would click there and tell them that information, and they get that number for you and send you a $300 bill. Well, what that is is, 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 is crooks that are on there trying to trick you into paying them $300 to do nothing that you could have done yourself. So do not go to those pop-ups when you go to get your EIN number. You just keep on sailing, do it all yourself, there's nothing there to do except fill in information that you easily know. So how do I know that? Because I, I did the pop-up. And when I went to the bank and told them about it, they said, Steve, you didn't have to do that. Well, then I went back to my credit card company, and I got a credit for it. So if you get a weakened into it, you probably can get your credit card company to give you a, a credit uh, for that information. And you still get to keep your EIN number. Just word to the wise. <clears throat> Sales tax information, resale tax information. Uh, if you're going to be selling products and collecting tax, and you're going to need to know, well, the North Carolina Department of Revenue, and for hereafter, we will call them NCDOR. Another piece of good news here. They're really nice folks. And they will do all they can to help your business get started with the information you need, the forms you need, and how to fill out your forms in this. They've got uh, tutorials online at the NCDOR number. Uh, your local small business center has uh, information there to help you as well. And they are really nice people. You can call and ask them questions. However, if you don't pay your taxes on time, they are not real nice people at that time. So let's, let's start out on a positive note, <clears throat> know how important it is. And I'll give you a little footnote here. Every accountant and CPA that I talk to says, when someone's starting a new business, Steve, make sure you tell them as they start collecting revenue, as they start collecting tax money that has to be sent to the state in a few days, make sure you tell them to put that money over in a separate account. Keep it 
keep it separated in your bookkeeping system so that when you have to send that money in, it's going to be there. Don't spend it for something else thinking that you've got a long time before you have to pay it because you don't. <clears throat> and not paying those taxes before or on the day they're due is going to cost you interest and penalties. And if it's serious, they'll shut your business down. So just remember, pigeonhole tax money, don't use it for anything else. Some other things we're going to have to deal with are business permit or business license or what we have done here, we call it a privilege license or business registration. Very easy to do if you're going to operate a business in a town, you're going to need to be registered. And that registration is so that the fire department knows who you are, the uh, tax people know who you are, the planning uh, zoning people know who you are, and all that's important. It's important that they know you're legal so that when flim flam people come into town, they'll run them out or tell them to register their business and, and make sure they're qualified to do business. Is it a hassle? It is not. You just go to your local town clerk, tell them what you're doing, uh, see if you need to uh, register yet. Sometimes there's no charge whatsoever for a new business in a town. Sometimes they may charge you. Uh, I've been in business here for 64 years and done, and I think my annual registration fee is, I think, $50, maybe $100. Uh, but we've been here a long time and have, a, have had a pretty substantial business through the years. Uh, here's what a business registration license looks like, about as simple as it can get. It's a simple way that the town knows who you are and where you are and that you're legal and that you're not uh, tr trying to hide or stay under the radar. <laughs> Excuse me. Once a year, you get to renew it. So I've got 64 of these on the wall around here somewhere. Another good place, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> the North Carolina Small Business Center Network has a website. You have probably already been there if you registered uh, to attend this seminar through through the uh, Small Business Center. But if you go back to that place, you will see that they've got a, a page that's called uh, Resources. And click on that when you've got some time and just scroll through it. Hundreds of different things of interest here. And every new business entrepreneur will be benefited by at least scanning this and having a good idea where you can come back to to get great information. About just a word there, that's right at that Small Business Center network. <clears throat> so where are you going to operate your business? Uh, before next week, getting into uh, budgeting, you need to determine that. Maybe you already have. It's going to be a home. Uh, you're going to work out of your home and leave. You don't have a bricks and mortar business. Each one of these will require different considerations in your business plan. Each one of them will consider different situations in your startup cost, in your profitability, and basically how you're going to uh, manage your business. But you need to have in your mind what you're going to do. Which will be the least expensive business to run? So let's go to chat. Let me ask you a question. Just guessing now. Which one of these three types of business will cost you the less amount of money to get started? Just working at home or working at home, but then going mobile, going out in the world, or having a bricks and mortar business, which is the least expensive business to start? Evelyn said home, Brandon said home. That's exactly right. If you're working at home, you're not going to have to increase every type of expenses related with having a, a piece of property. Uh, but the, the, the minute that you start thinking about, I'm going to need a business office, then we get into to, uh, rent or purchase or and all types of utilities and all that comes on board, and therefore a more complicated business plan. But let me tell you, there are some businesses that just need to be in an office. You know, customers are coming and, and going, and they need to have a storefront. So it's not that I don't want you to have that. I just want you to be aware that if you can get started at first on a smaller foundation and just work out of your house and grow a little bit at a time, 
That's a pretty good plan, a pretty darn good plan. No demand, change the plan. So let me ask you, are you already comfortable with the fact that you can sell what it is you're planning on selling? Do you have the knowledge, the expertise, the charisma, the professional sales uh, tools to sell it? Because no matter how much, how good the price is, how good it looks, nothing happens till somebody, until the salesman comes in the room. And next, will they buy it? Is, is, is it good enough that will stand up to competition that people will buy it for the price you're asking and continue to buy it and brag on it and tell other people they ought to buy it too? Have you got it refined to that point? Who are your primary first customers? Who are these folks that uh, you, we're going to say are the low-hanging fruit? the fruit that's easy to reach, fill our bucket up without spending a lot of money or time. Who are these people? These we're going to be calling our target customer groups. And where are they? Are they all over the United States where we'll reach them through the Internet? Or are they right here in a small community in a certain area? Now, we have some folks uh, in business, starting businesses here with us tonight that I already know their primary targeted groups are probably going to be within 15 miles of, of a dot on, on the map. Give that serious thought because when we know where our customers are, we're going to be able to put together a marketing plan that focuses on them and not everybody else. We can't be all things to all people, my friend, but we need to be everything to some people. And those some people are going to be our Raven fan customers. So we need to Get our target groups right down. And then figure out, okay, I know who they are. I know where they are. Now what's the best media and method to reach them? And we'll do that in week four. We'll look at each type of group and see how to, to get them on board with you and spend the least amount of money to make it happen. All right, let's go back and talk about our marketable profit centers. The profit center is something you're doing to make money. The word marketable is in there because we want our profit centers to be able to be marketable by themselves. We want different things that we're selling to be attractive to a diversified different customer groups. And as we pick them out and name them, we'll be able to market them and therefore be able to have more uh, diversified groups of customers to come and buy. Remember the different types now. Type number one, to bring in new customers and promote daily traffic. And these will be in your quizzes all the way through in your final quiz. <clears throat> the first type of marketable profit centers is devoted to bringing in new customers and promote daily traffic. Why, why number one? Because first of all, if you're a new business, you've got to have new customers. Second of all, New customers are needed even if you've got an old business because you'll lose a third of your customers every year. And in some communities, college communities, military communities such as that, you may lose a half of your customers every year. So you have to be focused on bringing in new customers. Make them come to you. Example, let's talk about the convenience store. At the convenience store, they have two basically number one type profit centers that are totally designed to bring in new traffic and create daily traffic. One is to sell a gasoline because they can change that price of that gasoline one penny per gallon and half of their business to go somewhere else or half of their business to rush in. Very subtle change can bring in more traffic flow and they've got control of that. They make very little money on, on uh, gasoline. They're not interested in making a high profit on gasoline. They're interested in getting you to come in the store. That's why they're selling gas. And the second profit center they have, very marketable, is the, is the, uh, the lottery tickets. Because when you get the big jackpots, the convenience store business gets real good. And all they're interested in is getting you into the store for profit center number one, 
because once you're in there, you'll be spending more money. The fast food businesses, all of them have a $5 meal. Promote these $5 meals to get you to stop and come in their business. But they're getting you in there so you can start buying Profit Center number two, which is all about repeat business and merchandising per, uh, uh, per, uh, purchases and purchases for higher margins. Because once you get into those stores for the, on that $5 meal, the average cost of people going to the fast food business now is 11 to $12 per person. Even $8 is, is, is getting to be a thing in the past. They came in to buy a $5 meal and end up spending $8 to $12. We all do it. So that's their profit sale number number two, which is the upsells. That's where they make the best amount of profits that they make in the business. At the convenience store and the grocery store, it's all about these little impulse items that are up close to the front of the store. The things that people pick up in an impulse need, not something they needed, but something they want. And if you're in the store, they pick these up, we pick these up and we buy them, and the store makes a lot more money. I mean like a hundred times more money on these little items than they would on the uh, on the things like gasoline and the things like lottery tickets. At the car dealership, it's the same way. They make very little money on new cars and new trucks, but they get you in that business to sell you parts and accessories. That's where their high profit margins are. That's their profit centers number two. Number three, big ticket sales. Again, we have to have them to be sustainable. And big ticket sales will help you get enough money that you can have some, some profits you can see and save. So maybe you're selling items that don't cost a lot of money. I'm fortunate in that my things that I sell, you know, range from, from a $2 bolt to a $20,000 piece of equipment. So I have a, a good chance of selling some high ticket items. But me and you have to learn how to bundle, to put together our profit centers in a package deal so that we can have a, a larger deposit and therefore some meaningful profit uh, with that deposit. Whatever it is that you're selling, food, clothes, equipment, we can bundle these items provided we selected the marketable profit centers that can be linked together. Remember the dots? We connected the dots. So when you have marketable profit centers that you can link together for upsells, upsells, then you're able to take a small item, group it together, end up with a big deposit and a happy day for everybody concerned. That's the, that's the big ticket sales. These three types of profit centers, you must learn them. You must accept the fact that you need to keep planning in your business to appreciate the fact that they're going to make you sustainable for a long time. Over at Smithfield's Barbecue, one of my favorite places, they got a $5 uh, barbecue sandwich, uh, uh, french fries, and a tea. But also while you're in there, they figured out how to bundle their items in the party packs, and you can spend uh, uh, four, four or five hundred dollars there with them. This past Christmas, our kitchen was a mess. We were remodeling, and we uh, let Smithfield's Barbecue and Chicken do our Christmas uh, gathering for my big family, and it was wonderful. We thoroughly enjoyed it, so I was glad they had that. My bill when I left there was uh, between uh, $350 and $400, so glad, glad they had that. Can you do all this alone? Maybe. But it's hard to stand alone in this world to do anything. And usually if you're going to move forward at a reasonable pace, even doing small steps at a time, unless you are incredibly savvy and have a lot of extra time, we probably don't need to learn how to delegate. And that's the big D word. The word delegate is a major factor in moving forward. Good news. You can delegate a lot of stuff to me. You can delegate a lot of stuff to the small business center. You can delegate a lot of stuff to, 
to different people in your community for very low cost. And these contributions that will come to you can make a world of difference in how fast you can move forward. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Uh, yeah, you maybe don't have to meet some new people and maybe don't have to invest in some new people. So here's the, here's the factor. <clears throat> invest. We're in business now, and we're going to invest. But we invest when we expect to get a return on the investment. We feel good about investing when we feel good about getting a return on the investment. See the difference? So we buy business cards. We buy uh, uh, boost at Facebook, we get our website together, uh, we uh, hire someone to help us send out emails, we have someone help us put together some videos, we invest, we invest, we invest, but with every penny that we're investing, we're expecting a dollar back in return. In the long term, you make the investments that last a long time that keep bringing you back return returns. And that's what we're going to be focusing on during the course, those types of investments. There's a kind of cost that we're going to put into the budget next week that's a one-time expense. And that one-time expense to get your business up and running will vary depending on the business you're at and how far along you are with it. But make a start. Start tonight thinking about what's it going to cost me to get started uh, what is these one-time expenses? Because that, that you got to account for that. And then the rest of the story will be, what are our regular, our continuing expenses going to be? And they need to go into your business plan as well. But your startup costs are going to vary depending on what you're up to and when you're starting. Sometimes they can be tremendous and sometimes not. Maybe your startup cost have got you in such a way that you don't feel like that you can afford it, that you don't have the money to pay for it. Well, in, in, uh, well, we'll talk about different ways to, to, to fund and finance your business, and I can send you some, some uh, handouts to, to help you figure that out. And I've got some videos at my YouTube channel that talk specific, specifically about that, and i help you with it. List down now the different things that you know is going to cost you to get your business up and running. You will need that to do your budget plan and your uh, business plan. So why put it off? Just go ahead and start making that list of what you know you need to do. And estimate how much money you think that will be. <clears throat> if you're unsure, put down what you, are, what you feel good about. And if you tell me or Ruthie or whoever the small business center director is that you're working with, the type of business that you are, are at, ask, we can ask a few questions and help you complete that list. If you haven't ever been there, there's no way in the world you would know it. And that's why we're here to try to help you. Uh, between the small business centers and me, their contacts and mine, whatever you're getting ready to start, if I hadn't done it myself, I know somebody that has. And if, I, and if that's not the case, I know I can go to Ruthie and she'll know somebody that can. And if she doesn't, she's got 77 other small business centers to, to uh, help her figure it out. So you're not in this alone. Let us let us help you with it. Now, to borrow money from the bank as a brand new entrepreneur business is going to be a tough a tough deal. Why is that? Because most small businesses that get started don't make it. It used to be five out of eight went out of business within a couple of years. Since the pandemic, things have improved quite a bit. Folks are coming to more webinars and seminars, and they're being more careful about uh, investing their money. And I think the, I think it's improved now. I think that more businesses that are getting started stay in business. They may not grow as fast as they want to, but since they're on a good foundation, they're able to stay in business. But the banker, if you're there to ask him for long term, a loan for a long term, and he knows that in the short term, most new small businesses don't make it, just because you're in business don't mean you're going to get a loan. There are some things, though, that you can do to improve that situation, and you need to know. 
first of all, to improve your chances, if you have roots in the community or you have people that can vouch for you or, or be references, that's a good thing with a local bank, of course. Uh, if you can prove that you paid your taxes, that's a good thing. And they're going to want to see at least three years and maybe five years. But sometimes brand new entrepreneurs come into these uh, uh, courses that never file taxes. Someone said you haven't made enough that you had to. Well, you're going to need to file them now, even if you have to go back for two or three years, if you're planning on borrowing money from a lending institution. They're going to want to see those tax records. You're going to need to have a decent credit score and a credit history. So sometimes uh, uh, folks in these classes have, don't have a credit history. Young, just getting started, never had a credit card, just been uh, paying cash. Well, that's going to need to change. So uh, if that's your situation, it's going to be helpful if you go to the bank, open up a banking account, get a, uh, get a debit card that goes with that account even. In other words, start some type of relationship with the lending institutions where there'll be a record being kept, and then protect your record. The very day you get a bill in on your credit card, pay it. Uh, pay on time, pay early, and that'll help your credit score start getting better right away. Uh, if you've been in business before or are in business now, write a bio about yourself and your business experience and what you can do well, what talents that you have, what skills that you have. And you know as you're doing this, you'll start taking personal inventory. What skills do you need to improve on or to enhance? And when you come back to me and you tell, tell those to me, I'm going to be able to send you some information to help you or maybe uh, tell you when I'm giving a webinar that focuses on that. Or you don't need a business plan at the bank? You are. Is it no, no, no have to be sophisticated? It'll need to be sophisticated to the point of the type of business that you're in. It'll need to be sophisticated to the point of the amount of money that you're borrowing. All different levels of things. But right now, no. What we're going to cover next week uh, that you're going to have it will be all the sophistication you need, and you'll be able to do it without sweating, I promise you. <clears throat> Have you ever heard the term big kahuna? Big kahuna, like in the Polynesian area, like Hawaii and po uh, Polynesia, that's the that's the king or the queen or the individual that's been around. He knows it all. He knows how things work. When the small business and big business world, we refer to the big kahuna as someone in a certain type of business that has mastered it. That's won the award that continues to do it right. That. Uh, stays in business year after year after year. You want to find the big kahuna in your type of business. So when you determine what the business is that you're going to go for, then let's search on the internet, let's search on Facebook and find someone that's doing that type of business really well, and then we're going to learn from them. Well, we can see what kind of marketing they're doing, what their customer base looks like, what's working. There's no reason for me and you to try to reinvent the wheel to get this business up and running. There's no reason at all to do that. It's important that that, uh, that we look and see uh, what other people are doing that's working. I mentioned to Crystal earlier uh, in Greenville. Uh, she's uh, working towards getting a, a, a business started and, and, and uh, shared with me. And, <clears throat> There's enough of folks around that are, is doing that business all across the United States that we can spend a little time researching and get some great ideas from them, put those into our plan, and, and make them work for us as well. I do that all the time. It's important that you do that. Now with the Internet, you can see what people are doing all over the world. Uh, that might help you right here in your local community move forward. I've had the honor of being the big kahuna. Uh, in several areas of equipment sales, industrial sales, uh, material handling equipment sales, farm equipment sales, construction equipment sales. For a period of time, we were number one in the country or led the sales or were considered the very best at selling this particular type of product. And that is a very rewarding and gratifying feeling to be able to, to say that you've done that. Enjoy it while you can because it won't last. 
How do I know? Because there's always people like you and me that's going to be seeing what I'm doing and copy it to make sure they get a piece of the action. And it's just a matter of time before someone moves you off the top of the hill. If you're able to stay there for a long, long time, congratulations. You have to fight for it every day. But that's that's what we need to do. Remember, I said success in entrepreneurship is staying in the game. And staying in the game is seeing what other people are doing right and wrong and then taking that information and becoming savvy, becoming shrewd, and making it work for us and feeling really good about it, okay? we got to be smarter in selling. we got to be better in dodging bullets. we got to become the... Uh, we got to want to become like the big kahuna for our business to be sustainable. Again, surround yourself with advisors and mentors that can help you. Uh, people with a lot of knowledge and common sense and able to communicate are kind of rare. Smartness, savviness is kind of rare. So when you recognize them or you know you've got a contact you can develop a closer relationship with that will help you, that's a good thing to do. And wherever you are in North Carolina, there's a small business center near you, and I'll be glad to hook you up uh, and, and make the introductions for you, and they will be glad to see you. You will be welcome, and you will not regret the process. So if, if you want me to do that, just drop it in email, put it in the chat right there. To just, just say, hook me up to my local small business center and tell me what town you're in in North Carolina, and I'll be glad to do that. And uh, so... To just know that you do have help out here. You don't have to worry about trying to do it right by yourself. You don't have competition. Whatever we're doing, we don't have competition, uh, but we need to know who they are. We know what they do right. We need to know what they do wrong. And then we have to have the, uh, the fortitude and the endurance to say to ourselves, I'm going to outwork them, outbrand them, outthink them, outlast them. Because the last person standing is the winner of the entrepreneur race. They don't have to be the person that made the million dollars along the way or went bankrupt along the way, but it is staying in business and hanging in there. So we have to know our competition. Do we need to hate, dislike, talk bad about our competition? No, 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 no. That's not what we're going to do. We're going to never say anything bad about them, but we are going to talk about ourselves and what we do right. And anyone that's shopping will know that I'm talking about things I can do right, that these other people are not as good at it, that will enhance your ability to get to order. <clears throat> that's called value added. What are you bringing to the table that the competition is not bringing to the table that makes your presentation more valuable than someone else's? Very, very important. So who is your most dangerous threat? Why, why are we worried about the competition? Are they our threat? No, they're not. There's enough business out here for all of us to make a good living, pretty much no matter what business that we're in. Your most dangerous threat to your, your new business getting started and being successful is the distractions that you and I have in our lives. The distractions will keep us from moving forward, from doing our plan, from doing our estimates, from doing the things that we need to do, because it's not rocket science, it's just being structured. But if we have so many distractions in our life that we can't move forward, it just isn't going to happen. And distractions come in a lot of different forms, and, and I'm not saying they're bad, because the distractions may be three kids at home or four children at home. They just keep you wound up doing stuff. It may be that you're the primary uh, care, uh, primary caregiver for a loved one, uh, for a senior citizen, and that's a 36-hour-a-day job. Distractions may be to see you say, Steve, I'm already working three jobs. I need to make more money, but I'm already working three jobs, so you're coming up here with all this stuff I've got to do. I just don't think it'll happen. Don't say that. Because there are priorities that you can set that will help you get the things done that you need to do. I can't do it for you. 
I can tell you a good way to start approaching that, but this has got to be something that you want to do. And I know that it, in my work, working with, with each one of you guys, that is probably the biggest challenge that we all face. How can I find time to do all this new stuff when i am already got all I can handle? Well, here's a word that may help you, and I use it every day. When you wake up tomorrow morning, lay there a few minutes before you feel like hopping out of bed, right? While you're laying there, getting your thoughts together, getting your head clear. Tell yourself three things that you need to do tomorrow to help you achieve your goals. What is your to-do list, your three things you need to do? And then you get up and get your day started and do everything you can to achieve those three important goals, those three important priorities. And that means you have to fight distractions and put off doing this and put off doing that or maybe telling somebody you'll call them back. But when you can, it'll work. Some days you'll be able to get six things done and some days you can't get any done because that's life. But if you're trying, things will work. This morning, I knew that today I needed, the most important thing I needed to do today was send out reminders about our class tonight and tomorrow and Thursday night. I needed to do three videos on new products that we've got because the season is here and it's time to do them. I had two important priorities today. I didn't have three, I had two. And you know what? At three o'clock this afternoon, I said I got it done and then I started on my list of other things to do. But I had to defy distractions. I didn't I took all my customer calls, but some things you can't postpone. But try. Remember to have a priority list every day, that to-do list, and don't just make it a list of things that maybe you'd like to do. The important things, you move them up to the top and try to get them done before noon tomorrow. Let me know how that works out for you. Oftentimes, I'll get a note from folks and say, Steve, this is working. It don't work every day, but it works several days a week, and I sure do feel better about that. <clears throat> What are you going to do to make our business last the long haul? We're going to repeat this because it's going to be important for us. Your business cannot be all things to all people. We're, we're not a Walmart. We're not a Target. We're not a food line. Our business can't be all things to all people, but it must be everything to some people. It must be everything to some people. And when we look at that, those some people that we're really targeting and working hard to get their business, we'll get them. And those some people will, will become your raving fan customers. We don't need to target certain groups of customers. We don't create a database of email addresses and phone numbers so we can stay in touch with our customers. We don't remember it's so important that we keep sending out fresh promotions. And we hadn't said this before, but one of the big things that you're going to do to keep your business alive is to follow up after sales and to create opportunities to, to start knowing your customers. <clears throat> now, Darcy Garcia is with us tonight. Darcy, I'm so glad you were able to join us. She well, works long, hard hours on different things, but Darcy is working hard to become a florist and uh, to uh, become the best force that she can be, maybe someday have her own business. But she's doing a lot of new and good things to, in the way she's studying and making her presentations. And Darcy, if you can stay with us on these Tuesday nights, I'll share a lot of information that you've already shared with folks. Uh, you've done a good job with your mission and vision statements and starting to do a one-on-one -on -one training with your customers. So proud of you. Uh, hang in there, and I hope you can uh, stay through this course to completion. So we've got good people on board with you right here tonight that we all can learn from. And as y'all send me information about what you're doing, and I share it and put some pictures up, and we all learn from each other, uh, give criticism to folks. Um, we, we've got Sir Wanky uh, uh, Mitchell that's uh, in uh, Roanoke Rapids that is doing a fantastic job getting her marketing business up. She makes 
uh, design type items on Facebook. I'll share with you some links to her pages, and uh, she's with us and just doing a wonderful job too. So so proud of watching these uh, these businesses grow, and, and I know what a great association it is to be able to, to help each other. Let's talk about DBAs, doing business ads. Maybe you hadn't thought about this, but this is a, a tool that you can use to number one, help keep, your, help keep your administrative costs down in naming your business. And number two, it can help you really do a better job in marketing by uh, calling your products different names or private labels or signature items, which all comes into the DBA family. In week four, we'll talk really big time about DBAs, but I'm going to be sending you information before them. So uh, re read, read the handout on them, get a, get a grasp and understanding about what these are about, and we'll talk about in depth. DBAs are really, really important. Are you going to need a business plan? Yes. Does it need to be sophisticated? No. Next week, you'll be able to put together one in two or three pages. The main thing that I want you to, to keep in mind is to have a planner so that you know what steps you need to be taking along the way, and that will tie into a, 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 a more active business plan later on. Sometimes you have to be in business a year or so before you can really put together a truthful business plan, because right now we're going to be estimating and guessing at the numbers. So we'll, we'll, we'll take that in light. So what do we want to do with that business plan is to avoid unexpected expenses and pitfalls, and we'll do that for you. You hang with it and learn, and you'll be able to make that happen. Next week, you'll be, we'll get your planner, we'll get your budget started, and all will start coming together for you, no doubt about it. I'm going to give you a little tip now that as you notice other businesses working and things going on that you will understand. I don't want you to give any discounts at all unless you had planned to give those discounts. I give discounts all the time, but they are planned. And if you use discounting as a way to help sell your products or your service, fine. But do not give discounts that you didn't plan to give because you need to maintain a certain profit margin to make it to make it the next week, to make it till next month. And if you start discounting wildly, you, you just can't do it. It's not important that you're the cheapest person in town, but because I'll tell you, people will be shopping for a good price, but it don't have to be the cheapest with the customers that's probably going to keep you alive. So just take that off the board. We're, we're not going to say that our goal is to be the cheapest guy in town. You don't have a cost of doing business. C-O-D-B, and you have to make enough money from the products and services you're selling, not only to pay your payroll and, your, and, 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 and yourself and buy groceries, but also you don't have other business expenses that have to be paid as well. That's called overhead or cost of doing business. That has to come into play. We do not want to say, take it or leave it with our pricing. That is not the message we want to send out to the world, take it or leave it. The message we want to send out to the world is, thank you for considering this product. Here's, here's the advertised asking price, but we've got different ways you can buy it. Let's negotiate. Let's find a way that you feel good about buying this. That's where you want to, that's where you want to be. Because if you're saying take it or leave it, 80% of your potential customers are leaving it. They're going out to shop somewhere else. They may come back, but when they left, that was negative cash flow, and you may never see them again. So we'll talk a lot about let's do not do take it or leave it, and I'll show you different ways to avoid that. Let's wrap this up now and kind of start putting it back together. And after I finish the presentation, invite everybody to stay on board, turn your microphone on, ask any questions. I'd appreciate any comments. If there are certain things that are going on in your business or in your planning that just don't seem like anybody is, is hitting the right buttons, then send me an email or write it in chat here and, and let me know, and we'll work it into our, our uh, webinars during this course 
So we'll get these things covered for you, okay? Again, you're the most important person in the room. We have these to serve you. When you get your survey, please fill it out and send it on in. Our goal in the Academy of Entrepreneurs and Associates is that we all strive to keep our principles in front of our profits. You're starting right now as you're starting your new business to write your legacy. And I want that legacy for you to be one of a giver and not a taker. A giver of good news, a bringer of gifts, someone that reaches out and helps people, listens to folks. In other words, you're just being the best person you can be. And when it comes to pricing, yes, we're going to make a profit. We need to make a profit. We need to be proud of the fact that we're going to make a profit. But we're not going to lie or steal. We're not going to misrepresent. We don't. We don't, we, don't, we don't take the high road so that every time a customer comes back in the door, they're going to be glad to see you, and they will become a raving fan customer. You don't create raving fan customers by cheating folks or taking advantage of them. I like to put this all in a nice basket and say, let's keep our principles in front of our profits. The families and the acquaintances that you have in your community are going to be so proud of you because you are a business person. There's not a lot of entrepreneurs out here in the world. And maybe in your family, you'll be the first one. And if indeed you make it and you're successful in the long haul, you take a lot of pride in that. Your children will take a lot of pride in what you're doing. So hang in there. Believe in yourself. Let's try to make that happen. <clears throat> You don't need to be seen and be seen when you stand in the community. Be active in your church groups, civic groups, uh, chambers of commerce, those places like that. Start start thinking about how can I improve my skills? Uh, how can I meet more people in the community? Uh, what's it going to take for, for me to feel good about going out, greeting folks, smiling, offering warmth and light? Offering warmth and light so that people feel good about working with you. These first impressions are going to be very important. And the thing that we'll talk about in marketing is that I want each one of you to create a marketing introduction type video where that you are uh, making a video introducing yourself and your business, 30 to 40 seconds. This will be a requirement to become Academy member. So just know that it's easy to do. Everybody's got a phone now. Start practicing and working on it, and we'll help you with it if we need to. So uh, videos are going to be really important, and uh, uh, we'll talk a lot about that and show you why. This is a big, big deal. A few um, Last year, uh, Jason Williams, the preacher down in Elizabeth Town, uh, gave a sermon on endurance, and, of course, he was talking about finding the endurance to be a good Christian. And I listened to that, and by golly, everything he was saying also is about finding the endurance to stay in business, to stay an entrepreneur. So let's talk about that. What does it take to have endurance? Number one is we need to pace ourselves. Like I said, the distractions are going to get in the way, so we don't have to pace ourselves so we can stay sane but still start making progress. Your pace may be faster or slower than the next person. I understand that we're all different. Your face may say, I don't need to attend five or six of these uh, courses before I get it, or maybe on the first go around, you're ready to go wide open. But pace yourself to where you feel comfortable. I like to say I need to humble myself and encourage other people to do the same. It's really hard to soak in stuff if you think you know it all. And I, I talk a lot here, but my friends, I will tell you, I know I do not know it all. There's things happening out here every day that changes the game, changes the rules, and we have to stay on top of it. But what I do try to be humble about is to say, I do know some things that really count. And on those, I don't stick with them and, and, uh, and try to share them. But I look forward to learning from everybody else that's got a, 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 a new thing, a new way of teaching that has value. Find your inspiration. Uh, find a way that every day you've got a way to, to or somewhere to go that'll put a smile on your face or let you take a deep breath 
and let some stress out as you breathe out. Find your inspiration. It may be in a certain song. It may be in a tune. It may be someone you listen to on the radio. It may be your mama that you call up every day and, and say hello and tell them you love them. And when they tell you how much they love you, it just inspires you. It may be prayer. I believe in the power of prayer. I encourage folks to do that. I don't do it as much as I ought to, but I know that it works. And and, and, and say that, pray about this new business. You find the encouragement where you need to. No matter what your religion is, find the inspiration. Because we need it. We need to keep that positive attitude to make it do it. Drop a few pounds. <laughs> you can see this big old belly of mine. I need to drop a few pounds. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about weight. We need to drop a few pounds of stubbornness. We need to drop a lot of pounds of procrastination. We need to drop a, a few pounds of maybe some friends that just aren't good influences. Maybe some habits that are just not good influences. We need to kind of take inventory now as we're making room to become a better entrepreneur is what do we need to kind of sort out and push aside? Let's drop a few pounds of things that are holding us back or keeping us from going the very best way. And number five, focus on the finish line. Your finish line may be different than anyone else's in the room. Your finish line may say, I'm going to have my business open by July 1st. Your finish line may be say, I want to stay with this uh, with this webinar and give it a chance. I'll be here for the next five uh, Tuesday nights and, and see what I can make up. Your finish line might be, I just need to get to the next step. I need to add two more profit centers to my business. Whatever it is, focus on it. Uh, set your priorities to help you get there. And by golly, maybe it will happen. Now, next Tuesday, 6.30, our topic is going to be budgeting 101 for startups. Uh, of putting together a timeline and a business plan that will work and is easy. You will love it. It is a good presentation, or I hope that you will love it. It's just been changed. I haven't done it but one more one time before, so it's brand new, and it's so very serious. And your handouts and support information will be very, very helpful. So that's next Tuesday. I hope you make it. And if you know someone else that you can call or email or share uh, a notice about this, invite them to join with you and study together. Now, if we have some husband and wives or some other partners with you in your business, they're certainly welcome to join as well. So let me encourage you on this dark night, let your light shine. I, I was in the Coast Guard, and I worked in the lighthouse at Cape Lookout for two years. And that is an incredible experience, lighthouse duty, to be out there on, on the coast and in the wind and the clouds and see that light going across the dark skies, across the shoals. Light, let your light shine. It may just be that candle you're holding up, but let folks know that you're alive and well and you got a light and you're warm and you will share it. And you will share it. Let your light shine. I want us all to remember that we all are living in the goodness of God. Maybe we think we've got it under control, but there's not but one person that's got it under control, and that's God. Whatever your religion is and who that is in your religion, know that so that sometimes you can just relax and say, I need to let go. I need just to stop thinking about how big and important I am. Make up my bed the next morning and go back to work. That's right. So let's all do that together. So thank you for joining us. It's good to meet y'all for the first time. Mario and Joanna, and we had someone that's an unknown on the screen. Please give me your names and your email addresses over in the chat so that I'll be able to send this information to you. Ray, so glad to have you with us tonight, and Evelyn, have you back. And Darcy, I, I hope you can get your mic working. I'd like to hear your voice. Anita, your first time. Thank you for being with us. And uh, let me hear from you. What do you think, guys? Thanks, Steve. It's good to hear from you. Okay. I hope things are going well with you. We've been missing you. Yes. Yeah. I, I actually couldn't talk earlier because I'm I was getting onto the airport into the airport, but now I, I'm stable. So, um, uh, yeah, I'm making yeah. big moves. That's good. Are, are Tuesday nights going to suit you better than the other nights I have? 
Um, I hope so. <laughs> it's been a little bit crazy because I'm sort of working two jobs, one oh. at the job I work at and then one full-time oh. for myself. Okay. Well, I'll, cl- I'll include your information in our uh, people that are going the extra mile and because uh, I really appreciate it and help the other folks. And you keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other comments that we have from maybe some of our new guests tonight? I just wanted to say thank you so much. Um, I have been in business for about seven years now, um, and I absolutely loved your demeanor and tone, and I took away so many things. Um, but I'm supporting somebody in the business venture, and just just hearing your comfort and your calmness walking through people in this I think I, is, is amazing, and there's so much that they can get out of what you're presenting and just the way you're so supportive. Well, thank you, Evelyn. I appreciate that. Where are you located? I'm in Burlington, North Carolina. In Burlington. That's fantastic. You know, what I've come to realize recently, more recently, is there's just so much noise and chaos in, on the news and in the business world and in people teaching and telling us we got to do this and we got to do that. And, you know, that's what I do. That's what I do. But what I want to make sure there's an umbrella over all this, and I know that's just noise. Uh, we pick up from it what we can use and put it to work. But we've got to remember to stay solid and with a good foundation and, and stay on the path. And so that's what I want to encourage us all to do. Your chances to run in off the road and running in the ditch when you're when you're staying on a good solid structured path <clears throat> really improved. When we start listening to the noise and people out here way well on one side or the other side, there's a good chance you will run into a wreck and turn people off and lose your business. So just a little bit of extra information here. Thank you, Evelyn. I appreciate the comments. Thank you. I hope you'll join us uh, on Tuesday nights. All right. Anyone else? Well, thank you all. I hope you have a great week, a great weekend. It's supposed to be a little warmer this weekend, hopefully without a very little rain. And uh, I'll be sending you lots of information. <clears throat> Read the homework assignments. The homework assignments are there for you. I'm, I'm setting the table for you and encouraging you to do what you feel good about doing. And the more you do, the better your chances are to uh, graduate as a new member of the academy. And we'll talk a lot about that too. Send me emails, questions. Uh, I'm, I'm here for you. Uh, if you want to be in touch with your small business center, let me know that and I'll help you along the way. So thank you very much. God bless you and your family. I hope you have a great evening, and and, uh, we'll see you next week.